Good morning and welcome to the Church in the Gardens. Uh, virtually, our praise band and Sunny have the pleasure of being in the sanctuary. And if you had a little time last night to join Musica Regina, um, the concert was also in the sanctuary and it was really lovely. So we're getting closer and closer to the sanctuary um, and hopefully one day we will be back there together again. Um, as you know, for the month of November, we have the pleasure of Reverend Dr. Glenn Missick leading us in worship. Um, and in December, Reverend Elizabeth Perry will be joining us. Um, and please note on December 24th, we are going to have services at 6 and 11 for Christmas Eve. And we ask for prayers for all those who are sick and healing, those who are grieving and hurting. Please pray particularly for Jackie Russell and Denise Ost, and please continue to pray for Rosa Augusto, Amelia Turner Everett, who are continuing to recover from health issues. And we're going to lift up a prayer of thanks for Betty Sheets because we understand that she's returning home after a very long time in rehab and must be really looking forward to it. And hopefully we can hear a little bit from her later um, today. Um, we are very grateful that we have a care committee to care for us. You can call on any deacon or anyone on the care committee if you know of someone in need or if you were in need yourself. Um, and they can also refer you to our pastors if you need pastoral counseling um, as well. Um, we're excited that the Korean congregation has begun worshiping in the sanctuary at two on Sundays, and we need to lift up a prayer that they can continue to do that. Um, we're all aware that the numbers are ticking upwards in our community, and we're going to try and do everything we can to do our part and bring them back down again and hopefully get back together again. And this is in particular to support um, just being together eventually. We're lucky to have, um, I'll just lift up Rama in thanks that he holds us together virtually. And it's really been great that we can at least see each other on the screen um, and have coffee hour um, through his great gifts. Um, the Church in the Garden Sunday School is continuing to meet virtually um, and they currently have 11 students. So it's exciting that um, Sunday School has started and is continuing for that group. Um, so we're excited that Advent is coming up. I can't believe we're already here, but um, as of November 29th, um, we're going to be following, I believe, for Advent and Christmas 2020, and it's from the creators of Dark Woods, Roll Down Justice, and Angels Among Us. And we're going to be celebrating the season of Advent and Christmas through a worship series from Worship Design Studios entitled I Believe. Throughout the season, Reverend Missick and Perry will lead us through messages of hope, love, joy, and peace leading up to the Christmas Eve services celebrating Christ's birth. Um, what's really important is that we're going to ask you to have your own set of Advent candles to light. Um, together in solidarity, even though we're not together in person, we're together virtually. And uh, it's important to have that season of light. Silent prayer and meditation has been taking a hiatus um, and possibly will resume in December. So keep your eyes peeled. Um, please make sure to take a look at Weekly Word. Um, it's coming to us as the latest news for you, but there's some um, topics in there that may not be addressed here. Um, I'd like to call on Alan Maurer for a quick announcement about stewardship. Yes, good morning. I'm here today to let you know what the Stewardship Committee Thanksgiving mission will be. This year, of course, we all know it's been a very long and challenging year, but here at the Church in the Gardens, we have much for which to be thankful. Thoughtful sermons from dedicated pastors, inspiring musical presentations from our music director, the praise band, and the soloists. We have a virtual Sunday school for our children. The deacons care response to those in need and much more. Through technology, we have opened new pathways to reaching out to our church community. In that spirit, we aim to expand our technological abilities both in the sanctuary and the parish house. We hope to bring our Zoom services as well as other applications for worship 
and programming to the much needed wiring and hardware upgrade. Our hope would be to raise $8,500 through Thanksgiving offerings for purchase and installation costs. We ask that you embrace these advancements by giving generously this season. You may earmark your gift for the Thanksgiving offering by using the special envelope in a letter recently sent to you. Please indicate Thanksgiving offering on the notation, the notation line of your check. And I thank you very, very much. Thank you, Alan. Uh, I Next, uh, Liz Sheehan has some great news for us. Uh, yes, good morning, everyone. I'm here to talk about the World Service Committee is going to be doing a, our annual uh, toy drive for the Briarwood Children's Shelter. We've been doing it for about eight or nine years now, but this year will be a little bit different. There'll be no in-person party, but we want to continue to get the gifts. Now, many of you remember that you would come down and choose a, an angel from the tree, and then buy the gift, bring it back to us, and then we would take all the gifts together over there. This year, it's gonna be a little different. Um, if you looked at the weekly word, there is a link to follow for an online sign up. Um, you can choose the gender um, and the age of the child, and we'll keep track of that. You'll continue to get the gifts and then bring them to the church office. And we'll have a few more weeks this time until maybe mid-December, like the 18th, since we're not going to be having a party early in the December. Anyone who has a problem, maybe they can't get the gift or they cannot access the online link, uh, my number is there. You can call me and I will help facilitate that. And I can also put it in the chat if you'd like me to do that. But I thank you very much and hopefully um, we'll be able to make Christmas still cheerful for these children, some of whom have suffered deaths of parents due to the COVID virus. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. And now our Reverend Dr. Glenn C. Missick, I don't believe needs any further introduction. We've been fortunate to have him ministering with us, look at him shaking his head, for a very long and lovely time. So um, welcome. Reverend Dr. Missick. Good to be here. Thank you, Cindy. Good morning, everyone. I uh, hope you are staying well and staying safe. Uh, let us enter into worship this morning as we look to, our, to the Lord in prayer. Almighty and eternal God, God of, uh, of, of, of the ages, God, who, has you, who are still with us, <clears throat> excuse me, even in the midst of this pandemic, we thank you for this opportunity now to worship you. And so as we attempt to worship you, we pray that our worship may indeed be in spirit and in truth. It is through Jesus Christ, our Lord, that we ask this prayer. Amen. Amen. Please join in our call to worship. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. For great is his steadfast love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. And uh, we're joining you again from the sanctuary. Uh, we welcome back Brandon on the drums. Brandon, Brandon, give a big splash on your cymbal there. Let's hear it. There we go. He's back. All right, and here is Manuel joining us again on the bass, and of course our lovely Jen McDonald. So thank you to the Praise Band members for coming back. Uh, let us all join together singing Be Still for the Presence.
Let us together confess our sins to Almighty God. Dear Heavenly Father, we lower our heads before you and we confess that we have too often forgotten that we are yours. Sometimes we carry on our lives as if there, were, there was no God and we fall short of being a credible witness to you. For these things, we ask your forgiveness and we also ask for your strength. Give us clear minds and open hearts so we may witness to you in our world. Remind us to be who you would have us to be regardless of what we are doing or who, are, who we are with. Hold us to you and build our relationship with you and with those you have given us on earth. Amen. Hear the assurance of pardon. Almighty God, who does freely pardon all who repent and turn to him, now fulfilling in every contrite heart the promise of redeeming grace, forgiving all our sins, and cleansing us from an evil conscience, through the perfect sacrifice of Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord, of peace of Christ be with you, my friends. And also with you. Our first reading this morning comes to us from Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 3. The good news of deliverance. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. Our gospel lesson comes to us from Luke chapter four, verses 14 through 20. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me 
because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, is this not Joseph's son? The word of the Lord. Dr. Misick, you need to unmute. Amazing, you have to be a technician and everything else when you're doing this stuff. <laughs> uh, good morning again, everybody. Uh, good to be here again on this third Sunday in November and to um, share with you the good news of the gospel. The, the sermon topic, as you see, is entitled Being Clear About Our Mission, Being Clear About a Mission. And that text is taken from that um, 18 and 19th verse of, uh, verse of, uh, verses of um, Luke chapter 4, which also our Lord borrowed from um, the 61st chapter of Isaiah, read so wonderfully by Sydney. Um, let us open in prayer. Let, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, may the words now of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Earlier on in this passage in Luke, Dr. Luke tells us that Jesus, in verse 16, he said he went to, to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah's, Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, the spirit of the Lord is, is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. One of the things we see in this passage is that Jesus went to church. <laughs> it's called the synagogue back then, but Jesus went to church. Jesus spent time worshiping God, not only at home, but also with others. And he went to the gathered community uh, out of his cultural background. This would be an ethnic background. This would be the Jewish people, the Hebrew people. And he went there. And the second thing we notice in this, uh, in the gospel lesson too, is that Jesus was familiar with the scriptures. He was familiar with the scriptures. And because he was familiar with the scriptures, he was able to understand his mission here on earth. As we come towards the Advent season in, in, in a couple of weeks, we will begin to rehearse that story over again of God sending his son into the world to, to bring the world back into a better relationship with him. We, I like the prayer that says, the prayer of confession says, we've erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have left undone those things which we have to have done. And one of the things we've left undone is that we... Uh, particularly as the church today, we have erred and strayed away from God, I believe. I, I, I sit on committees in a Presbyterian church um, and particularly on, com on commissions that uh, we had a meeting this past week and we're hearing about the many churches that are closing and that will not open um, after this pandemic is over, unfortunately. And so my contention 
But the reason for that is that the reason they will not open is because they did not stay in connection with God. They had broken that connection a long time ago. We, 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 you say, well, they, they go to church, but they go to a building. The building, as I said many times over, the building is not the church. The people are the church. We are the body of Christ. And, and we are the people of Christ. And so we ought to be able to worship God anywhere. And indeed here on, in, on this virtual uh, reality here. So, uh, but my friends, we are living in a world, indeed a season when now more than ever, we Christians need some clarity about who and whose we are and what um, what, um, what is our mission? Unfortunately, there is so there there are so many uh, confu there's so much confusion. I'm sorry, in the Christian Church today about this issue, this issue of mission. Who are we? Consequently, we have, as I said, so many churches that are confused, discombobulated, depressed, torn apart and on the verge of extinction. And during these pandemics, when people are seeking the Lord, the prophet Isaiah says, seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man is thought and let them return unto the Lord for he will have mercy and will abundantly pardon. So many churches, so many people seeking God now seeking the Lord more than ever because of the, 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 the pandemics that are upon us. Uh, they're, they're seeking the Lord more than ever, but too many churches are closing their doors simply because they have no vision, they have no focus, they have no purpose. It is in times like these that crisis church needs to recalibrate, retool and rethink who are we? Why are we here? Where are we? What are we doing? Where are we going? Indeed, what is our purpose and mission? It's very clear. As Sherlock Holmes would often say to Dr. Watson, Dr. Watson Elementary, my dear Watson, <laughs> to get these answers, we let us, like the church throughout the ages, once again, return to the word of God and see what the Lord has to say about this. In the Gospel of Luke, as I said, in that fourth chapter, one of my favorite verses in the Bible, and I believe I've said this to you before, that which I have adopted as my mission in life to help me make sense as a pastor, as a preacher, um, just simply as a Christian, uh, to help me navigate through all of the trials and ups and downs of life. In this, in, in this, in those 18th and 19th, the 18th and 19th verse, Jesus quotes again from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verses 1 through 3. These verses are part of Isaiah's prophecy, which follows a long, and you need to read the book of Isaiah, a long, sometimes harsh call for the wicked to repent and turn from their sins. And that's in chapters 56 through 90, 90 56 through 59. Um, now, in this section, chapter 60 through 62, of chapter 60 through 62, Isaiah looks ahead at the future glory of a restored community of God's people. And then, is, it, then it is followed again, followed again with one last warning of final judgment of the wicked and rest restoration of the repentant in chapter 63 through 66. Let me break this down for you, uh, Jesus' proclamation and Jesus' adoption of his mission. And I pray that maybe some of you, as I have, will do this. It's quite simple. He says, first of all, he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Let me ask you a question this morning. Whose spirit is upon you? Whose spirit is upon you? What does that mean? It, 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 it means that he is endowed. He is covered and filled 
with the awesome supernatural power, authority, guidance, and favor of the Lord God Almighty, creator of all that is, King of kings and Lord of lords. My friend, is the spirit of the Lord upon you. The second thing he says is that because he has anointed me. What does that word anointed mean? I, I, I recall when I was getting my ordination, during my ordination, and uh, they would often ask the elders to come up and, and, and to lay hands on each other, anointed. David says in the 23rd Psalm, you're familiar with that word, he has a, he, he, the Lord is my shepherd, and he goes on to say, he anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Uh, that's sort of a physical anointing, but the spiritual anointed, the anointing comes from God. When you become a Christian, and by the way, becoming a Christian is not like osmosis. It, you have to make, you have to do it for yourself. You have to make that intention. You have to say to God, I love you. You don't say to your parents, uh, parents ask you, do you love me? You don't say, well, go ask my, uh, you, don't, you, don't, you don't make the argument, go ask my brother, my sister, or after all these years I have been with you, you're your child, right? You're saying to your parents, <laughs> normally the parents say that, after all I've done for you, you know, don't you think that I love you? No, I just want to hear you say it, mama, or I want to hear you say it, my son or my daughter. Do you love me? And so the anointing comes when, when we accept Christ into our lives. And I'm sure many of you remember your baptism or you remember your, your, your conversion experience when you receive Christ into your life. And perhaps maybe you've forgotten all about that, but we need to return to that and, and to remember what we committed to. Remember that relationship. Perhaps it's going strong for you, and perhaps, but for many, perhaps it's a broken relationship, and that relationship needs to be restored. So, in order for that to be restored, we need to be anointed. To rep anointed means that when we're anointed, it means that we begin to represent God. We begin to represent God's glory. It's not about us. It's not about the preacher. It's not about the choir. It's not about the the deacons. The the elders of the church, whatever, it is, it is about God. We're anointed by God and his works of deliverance on earth uh, and, to, and to its people that that anointing comes. Not only does anointing refer to a restoral of authority, but, it also, but also to the endowment of rich gifts. God, God anoints us by the Holy Spirit, God gives us a sense of purpose. God gives us the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me. All of this, my friends, then, is to fulfill uh, Jesus' mission and purpose on the earth. And as we are anointed by God's Spirit, we begin to understand what our mission is. As I'm bringing some, trying to bring some clarity to it this morning. Uh, and it begins to empower us to go out because the, the, the forces that we fight with, as Paul says, they're, they're not just human beings. We can argue with each other. We can fight with each other. But Paul says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers in this dark age. I see that the trucks are beginning the, the, to roll out again here in New York as we move into the second wave and, and, to, and to see the bodies that will that hopefully not, but that may be thrown into those trucks, and you can't even identify the bodies. Though that, that, that's evil forces. What we're going through now with this election, and we have a divided country, terribly divided country. That is not for anybody who does not believe that there's an evil force in our world. You've got to be. You need to come see me. I do some therapy. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I can send you to, to my good friend across the street here. He is a psychiatrist as well, renowned psychiatrist. But anyway, Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because, and then he says, because he has anointed me. And thirdly, he says, to preach the good news, the gospel to the poor. Um, let me take a little break here. And if you hear some noise, I just want to ask my wife. I think she's, she's, uh, Listen, that's, that's the problem of uh, working 
at home here. There's a school right across from us and every day the guys out there cutting. Thank you, can you close the window there? They're cutting the grass, that's what's going on there. Thank you, oh, you hear a fire truck, thank you so much. Good to have, a, have, have, have your wife right as a good assistant. She, does, she doesn't like to be on camera, but she, she's very, very helpful and to um, give thanks to God for her. So the third thing he says is to preach the good news. The good news means gospel. To, to, whom, to whom? To the poor. The poor are not just those with little financial means. There is a much broader application here. The poor refers to those who are poor in spirit. That is those who are lacking in spiritual truth or power. It is all who are without intimate personal relationship with Jesus Christ. All those who are who need to depend on God. Is there anyone here today poor in spirit? And then Jesus goes on to say, to preach, to heal the brokenhearted. Oh my God, to heal the brokenhearted, to be indeed a spiritual internist, to heal people's deepest emotional and spiritual needs. COVID-19 has produced so many who are not only physically ill, some psychologically and spiritually. Suicide, as we're told by statisticians, suicide has, is on the rise with this COVID-19 like we've never seen before. Um, and, and there are so many lonely and hopeless people right now in this season of, the, of, this pan, of these pandemics. And so God empowers us with, with the Holy Spirit. God anoints us to preach good news to these people who are brokenhearted, people who are depressed, people who have anxiety, I'm teaching classes on, 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 on psychological counseling, and I, I often tell my students, I said, when you finish this master's degree, and you will have no problem finding a job because people are looking for therapists now more than ever. And there's nothing wrong with going to see a therapist. In fact, there's everything right about that. You know, most of us is just talk ther therapy. But if there is a problem, when we go, if we have a problem with our physical bodies, we go to the doctor, right? We have different specialists. If we have a problem with our mind. We, we ought to go and talk to somebody. Your neighbor can't help you. Not even your, your, your friends can't help you because they don't know how to be professional. They don't know how to, when you say something, they don't, they, they'll just throw their hands up and now all of a sudden they're in the same boat that you're in. But a professional is trained to be objective and to listen to your problem. Indeed, God is, is the best spirit, uh, therapist that you can go to. So, okay, so to heal the broken heart. And then Jesus goes on, he said, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Who are the captives? Again, all who are without Christ and consequently without salvation from a life of sin and weaknesses. They're captives to sin. They're captives, captives to the limitations weaknesses and temptations of, of the flesh, captives to the chaos and senselessness of this wicked lost world, and captives to the enemy who walks, as, P as Peter says in uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, Peter says, who walks about the, the evil one, who walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Captives to a past filled with pain and regrets, and a future without hope. There's so many people who don't want to let go of what happened to them back then. Therefore, they cannot realize the wonderful future that God has for them. And you and I, as God's people, are called upon to, to go and to let them know that Jesus loves them. I like that simple hymn that we, simple song that we sang as little children, it's so apropos to what we're going through now. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. We are weak, they are weak, but he is strong. So 
recovery of sight to the blind. And then Jesus goes on to say that the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because also he is to set, he, he, he set, he's sending me to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Oppressed? Well, let's see. If you were poor, brokenhearted, discriminated against, in prison, in chains, and blind, I suppose you'd feel oppressed. Don't you think so? I imagine some of you, some of us here today, in some way or the other, feel oppressed. All of us. You, perhaps you've lost your job. Perhaps you've lost a loved one to this virus or to something else. You feel oppressed, you feel down. Does anybody care? I like that song that says, yes, he cares. I know he cares. Jesus cares for you this morning. And that's the word for you this morning. Jesus cares for you. And then lastly, Jesus sums it up this way and hopefully we can sum it up in our mission statement as we adopt it. He said, the, the thing that God's called me to do, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to, to, to the poor, to set at liberty to those who are oppressed. And he says, finally, and to proclaim the acceptable year of God's favor, the acceptable year of the Lord. The Jewish audience in the synagogue where Jesus uh, proclaimed these words would have clearly recognized that there is a reference that this is a reference to the year of Jubilee found in Leviticus chapter 25, verses eight through seven. I hope you're writing down these scriptures so you can fact check me when I go, <laughs> when, you, when you go back. Okay? The, one who, the one year in every 50 where God proclaimed that all debts be forgiven and slaves set free. It's called the year of Jubilee. The prophet Isaiah long ago and now Jesus refer not to this one in 50 Jubilee, but to the final spiritual Jubilee. That time in history when God in his sovereign grace will bring freedom from the debt and chains of, 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 of that hold that bind us to those who are his. He will bring freedom to us. One day the kingdoms, says the scripture, of this world will become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. We hear that in Handel's Messiah. That is scripture. Shockingly, shockingly, Jesus then proclaims that that time is now. That time is now. My friends, do you realize that the time, that that time is still now? Even though Jesus said it more than 2,000 years ago, if you have not received your freedom, now is the time. I think it was last week, I, I hope I did quote Revelations, where Jesus says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. I did quote it. I believe I, I made a mistake and I said that the, that the, uh, that the, 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 the knob is on the inside. Actually, the knob is on the outside. The, 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 the lock from the door is on the outside. And we have the power to open that lock. God gives us free will. We can either refuse to open it, you know, or, or I'm sorry, let me back up a little bit. You see what this cover is doing to, to me? Uh, <laughs> good to have a little sense of humor, right? The, the knob is on the inside. We are on the inside. And Jesus is standing at the door knocking. And we need to open that door. Turn the knob, open the door, and let the Lord in. And when Jesus comes in, we begin to change. Transformation begins to take place. My friends, and when we let Jesus in, we not only receive relief from our oppression, receive relief from our poverty, but we also are assured that weeping may endure for a night, as the psalmist says, but joy will come in the morning. We're also assured that, that Jesus is a friend who sticks closer than any brother or sister, any mother or father. We also, we also understand that the Lord is our shepherd. And even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he has promised that he will be with us. This is the power that the church has. And we need to return to that. 
We need to utilize that. Our tears come out of my eyes. When I sit on these commissions and I hear churches saying, we don't have any money, we don't have any members. So, but we have this big building that we got to take care of. I'm not talking about church and the gardens now. I'm not talking about church and the gardens. Don't take this person. You know, I know, of, I mean, I know of huge churches that have lost so many members simply because they were not focused. They had, they, they had no sense of purpose. They, they erred and strayed from the vision and mission that God had given to them. And it is time for us to return to that. Um, when we are clear about our mission, we then begin to experience spiritual and numerical growth. Listen to Isaiah in that sixth chapter. If you go back and you read the sixth chapter of the book of Isaiah, here you have the prophet Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. He's in a worship experience, wonderful worship experience. And he began, begins through his spirit to see the, the glory of God, the presence of this mighty and powerful God. And, and at the end of that experience, the Lord says to him, then he, he oh, Isaiah says, then in verses eight through nine, he says, then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? And Isaiah emphatically says, here am I, Lord, send me. I pray this morning, my friends, the church and the gods, individually and collectively, that as God is speaking to you this morning, your answer will be, here am I, Lord, send me. As you send Jesus into this world, let me follow Jesus. And one day, my friends, if you do that, when it's all over, never mind your friends, never mind organizations giving you plaques and accolades and all that. I had a group the other day, I was on a website, a, a webinar, and somebody was saying, oh, you know, uh, Reverend Mystic, you know, we should honor you and we should give you that. I said, I don't need any more plaques. I got enough plaques over here on my wall. What I want to hear, though, is that when this life is over, and one day it will be over for me and for you, I want to hear Jesus say to me, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Come on up. Let me make you ruler over many things. I give this to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let all of God's people say, amen, amen. And now let us respond singing the servant song.
response to the Lord in prayer as we lift up not only ourselves to the Lord, knowing that God hears our prayers. And I, I cannot overemphasize it, my friends. God is real. God is real. God is not some fake or some something blowing in the wind. God is, God is real and is good to us. There's an old saying and that some churches, they sing that uh, he may not come when he wants us, when we want him, but he's always on time. And so as you pray to God, you lift up your cares and your trials that you're going through, uh, the worries of other, the, the concerns for others this morning. We, we talked about, uh, Cindy talked about others who are sick on our sick and shut in list. Let us also lift up our country right now that is in tremendous turmoil. And, but this too, that we, God will bring us out. Remember last week, that scripture from the 46th chapter of the Psalm says, God says, be still and know that I am God. God is with us. So let us go to this God in prayer this morning. Eternal God, you are the God of our weary years. You are the God of our silent tears. We come to you this morning, giving you praise and thanks for all your many wonderful blessings. We are so grateful that you woke us up this morning, that we are still in the land of the living when many did not make it. So we bless you this morning. We, we come to say that we love you, that we, we but, but also we come to say, Lord, that we, we, we are so sorry that we have not been as faithful as we ought to be. So we beg your forgiveness once again and ask you to renew us Restore unto us the joy of your salvation. Restore, restore unto us that sense of purpose, that sense of vision which Jesus had. Fill us with your spirit. Anoint us to proclaim good news, the gospel, to a people who are hurting, to a world that's just in such turmoil right now. Lord, we, we, we invoke now the presence of, of your spirit in this place and in our world. We know that you can do it. And so we're asking you this morning to come, Holy Spirit, come and be the comforter to those who are suffering, to those who are in distress, to those who are in press, oppressed, be with those in prisons, be with those on the streets, be with those who are so scared now and frightened because they've lost loved ones during the first wave of this coronavirus. And now they're beginning to, to, to fear as the, as the cold weather comes, Lord, and they're locked up in their homes and they cannot visit with their friends, and especially as Thanksgiving and Christmas holiday comes. And we know that these are some of the most depressing times of the year, but Lord, you have promised that we should cast all our cares, if we cast all our cares upon you, that you will care for us. And so I pray for each person under the sound of my voice right now, those who are hurting, those who feel abandoned, help them to know that you have not abandoned them. You will never leave them. You will never forsake them. You will keep them in perfect peace as they keep their hearts and minds stayed on you. Bless each one on the second shot in list of, of Church in the Gardens. We pray for Jackie. We pray for Rosa. We pray for Amelia. And others, we, 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 we thank you for this, this week that hopefully uh, we'll, act, we'll, we'll come home, Betty will come home. We thank you for healing her, Lord. We pray that you continue to bless them. We pray, Lord, for the leaders of Church in the Gardens. Help them, Lord, to, to know that you love them and that you care for them and that you have a purpose for the life of this church. And help them to spend time in your word to discern your will. And as they do so, that you will not only guide them through this pandemic and through all the pandemics of life, but one day when it's all over, they will hear you say, well done, good and faithful servant. Bless this nation. Be with Mr. Trump and Mr. Biden. Help them to come together to sit down at your conference table of, of peace and to come to reconciliation so that this nation will be healed. We pray for other countries that are suffering. We pray that you would be with them. We bless you, Lord. We praise you. And we thank you for who you are and whose we are. And now we open up and ask, my friends, that you present your requests to the Lord, knowing that 
God will hear your request and will act upon your request. Not in your time, but in God's time. God will act. So please. I'd like to thank God for the safe, de early delivery of my granddaughter. She came a month early. She's healthy. And my daughter-in-law is also doing well. Although they're in the hospital, they're fine. So thank you, God, for bringing that light into the world. Thank you, Lord. In the quietness of this moment, know that God is with you and whatever your heart's desire, whatever request that you're sending up to God, God hears you and God will act upon it. So Lord, we thank you for the prayers of your people and we know that you're hearing them and we know that you're gonna act upon them. So without any further ado, we give you praise, honor and glory. And we thank you in the matchless name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, uh, who's the one who taught us to pray by saying, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. You are for yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And my friends, the Bible says, freely you have received, freely you give. God has given us God's word and assurance that we are, we are God's people and that God will never leave us nor forsake us. God has given us the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit. And so all the Lord asks is that you give back for the, for the ministry of, of the church in the gardens to which you have committed to, and that you give back at least a tenth of, of, of what you have earned, and that's called a tithe. So bring your tithes and offerings into the storehouse, says the Lord, says Malachi, and see if, would I, if I will not open up the doors, the windows of heaven, and pour out such a blessing. You will not have room enough to contain it. Cindy, take it away. So there are three ways that you can uh, send your offering to the church. Um, basically through snail mail, send your check to the church office. You can set up a bill payment through your bank to have checks mailed to the church. Or you can go to our church website. And in the upper right hand corner, there is a link to donate through PayPal. So please give generously as you can.
Let us pray. Generous God, your good gifts to us are too many to name. We have been so blessed, not so that we may hide away these blessings, but to use them so that the blessings might be multiplied. As we give from our blessing stockpile, help it to multiply and grow. May our gifts empower multiple acts of mercy and compassion, and may your love pour over this world like a flood. If we had, have buried these gracious blessings, may today be the day we dig them up and put them to work so that we might be seen as your faithful servants. Amen. And let us join together in our closing hymn singing, Here I Am, Lord. Thank you, Sonny and the band, and thank you, Cindy, Rama, all for participation in this wonderful worship service this morning. And that song kind of sounds, sums it up again. It's from that passage in sixth chapter of Isaiah. Here I am, Lord. I will hold your people in my hand. I will go. Let me just close by ending a charge to you, which is from Matthew chapter 28, uh, verses 18 through 20. It's called the Great Commission. Jesus, on exiting this world, says to his disciples, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, uh, teaching them to observe all that I have, I have committed unto you. 
uh, and, 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 and I will be with you until the end of the world. And so I close as I close each Sunday with the benediction. And I want to read it this morning from the NIV version of, of uh, it's in Jude. It's at the end of Jude. It's Jude, Jude chapter 1, verse 24 through 25 for your reference. It says, to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy to the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, and power and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. You guys look so great there. I really miss that church, that, that building. I'm sorry. <laughs> Contradicted myself, right? <laughs> it's good. Um, it's, it's great. Some people may wonder why the prelude, why the postlude. The prelude is to prepare you to enter into God's presence. You don't rush into worship and then you don't rush out of worship. So that's what the postlude is for, is to calm that anxious spirit 
until you know and we leave God's presence. But we're not going to leave now. We're going to have coffee hour. Hello, everybody. Hello. How are you all doing? Great. Cindy, great job. Great job with you. <laughs> Thank you, Reverend Mister. All right. Um, Maybe everybody. Betty can unmute herself and update us. Betty. You can see that. Hey. Huh? You can change that. You can see all the windows. We can see you. Hello. Yeah, <laughs> I see she's working on it. Bottom left of your screen, Betty, there's a little microphone and click on that and it should unmute. There you go. Here I am. Here you are. Hi, Hi. Hi, Betty. Hi, Yang. Betty, how are you doing? Okay. I'm doing fine. I'm going to be uh, uh, home on Wednesday instead of Tuesday. Great. Okay. Wednesday. You look great. And all the spirits of the, uh, of what you were talking about, Reverend Mister, today really held for me for the journey of two solid months. Wow. <laughs> and it's going to be wow. wonderful to get back home. Amen. And everybody that sent me cards and letters and phone calls and it really helped a great deal. It really yes, did. That's wonderful. Thank you. And I God thank bless. everybody so very much. And thank God, please. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Number one. Yeah. I wanted to uh, let everybody know that uh, we have to keep uh, Rob Mackay in our prayers. He has COVID. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. Hey. But he's with us today, Rob. Yes, yes. Sending Rob. prayers of healing. Yeah. All right, oh, thanks. Wow. I got God bless you. Okay. So far, I'm very lucky. I've only had light symptoms. Okay. okay. Yeah. So we'll Although I've lost my ability like... to taste and smell. <laughs> oh. Ah, interesting. All right. Yeah, I'm out on the 19th, November 19th. Oh. Okay. Right, just so keep time. your prayers, all that kind Thank of you. Thank you. It will be. You know. Drink, drink a lot of honey, lemon. Mm. <laughs> it's a doctor in the house. Yeah, it's a doctor, right? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of fruits and vegetables. Oh, ah, and I want to yeah. thank uh, Brandon. He was superb on the drums today. Yeah. 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 Brandon, drawing, we're drawing. yeah. Brandon, you were very cool. Very <laughs> cool. Oh, yeah. taller. Yeah. <laughs> He's saying Sonny turned he on. Yeah, there he is. Oh, hey, Brandon. Betty, <laughs> hey, hey, you have someone home to uh, give you support when you get back home? Uh, yes, I will. I, I'm having a therapist and also an aide. And uh, okay, great. what we'll deliver, we'll be delivering my food. And uh, wonderful. my son took care of everything. Thank oh, you. That's, that's great. Wonderful. He yeah. was wonderful. That's great. Yeah, yeah. great, son. I want you all to keep my my nephew-in-law in prayer too. Uh, he's from the Bahamas and he had the COVID for a oh. month. And um, he just at the last minute when they thought they were gonna lose him, uh, oh. he happened to be in the hospital there in Nassau. And he had, had a friend who was a doctor at the hospital and he came to him and he told, he called his, his wife right away, my niece and said, you know, you need to get him out of here and take him to my aunt to Fort Lauderdale. So in hours, they had him on a plane to Fort Lauderdale. And uh, we've been praying for him. And she, she, we, I spoke with her the other day, and she said that he's, he's getting ready to come out now, and he's going into rehab. So oh, had it not wow. been for that last-minute intervention, he would not have been with us. So, you know, and rehab is, is, is wonderful for everybody who's been sick. I, I fully agree with it just it, it makes such a difference having that exercise. Rough, that's right. That's right. Rough ride. And we and uh, now for people who get COVID, we have much better therapeutics, and the vaccines are almost here. So Thank there's a God. lot of hope. <laughs> hey, I'm glad I'm a single citizen. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Me too. You gotta get us first. <laughs> yeah. It's great. It's great to see everybody and I okay, folks. wish you God's love and have a blessed week and I'll see you guys next week. Continue to yeah. talk though. Continue yeah. to have your coffee. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, how are you? Very well, thank you. You sounding good? I am good. Okay. We 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 pray for you. Well, thank you very much. May thank God heal you. Constance. 
Does anybody know how Rose is doing? She's doing fine. Betty would know. Yeah. She's, yeah. she's, she's okay. doing fine. She's recovering. It's a slow, it's a slow process. But she's recovering. And of course, she has that great spirit. And so she's going to get through it. Fine. Does anyone hear from Rosemary or Julia Banks? No, Rosemary's no. Doing, Rosemary's doing fine also. Oh, great. She's really doing very well. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so the treatment has been very successful. Mm. Oh, that's wonderful.